All right, so let's talk about something a little different, the sum and difference identities. Um, this is kind of how, where those co-function and uh, reduction identities came from that we haven't used yet, but you knew about them, uh, the even odd and the co-function identities or whatever I called them before, but um, this is where they came from. So you could actually prove those identities using your sum and difference identities. But let me show you what those sum and difference identities are. So here is what you guys tried to copy down. You have a copy of this identity on their formula chart and um, posted inside this lesson plan. But like I said, that alpha and the beta are just variables. So if it helps you to see it like this or X and Y or purple and green, whatever makes sense to you, it's just a pattern you have to recognize. And most of you have figured out there is a pattern. Hey, look, this and this and this and this are the same. The only difference is plus or minus. This and this and this and this are the same. The only difference is minus and plus. And this and this and this and this are the same, plus, minus, this and this, and this and this are the same, minus, plus. So you do have to kind of recognize that you know the differences, but it really is just find it, plug it in, and solve from there. So let's start with a very easy question. The cosine of 75 degrees. 75 degrees is not on the unit circle. However, 30 and 45 are. And since 30 plus 45 is equal to 75, I can split it up like this. This becomes my alpha and my beta or my X and my Y or my U and my V, whatever makes sense to you. So that's my sum identity. I'm going to use U and V and I plug it in. I solve each individual one cosine of 30. Uh, in order to use the hand trick, you do need to know that you're in radians or know that 30 is pi over 6, 45 is pi over 4, uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of up to you how you want to see it. I'm showing you every single possible step. So the cosine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2. So you solve each one individually, you plug them in, and you have to do fraction math properly. When you multiply fractions, you literally are multiplying across, not cross multiplication, which is a property of proportions, ratios, and probability. So I multiply across because we are evaluating. I'm going to deal with my multiplication before I deal with my subtraction. So I do that. In order to subtract, I need a least common denominator. Hey, we already have one. So I end up with this. This is the final answer. That's it. You don't have to go any further than that. So let's try a little bit different. What happens if I have it already in radian form? Some of you know, okay, well, I could do extra steps. Convert this to a degree, work with which degrees can add or subtract, and then convert back to radians and go from there. That's fine. You want to do those extra steps, that's great. But you got to get through fractions at some point, so it might be smart to just practice this. So I know that my unit circle values are over 1, over 6, over 4, over 3, over 2. Well, which of these could give me a least common denominator of 12? 3 and 4 and 2 and 6, right? That's really it. Okay, so I chose 3 and 4. You could have chosen 2 and 6, and that's fine, but I get... I did my math and I got the, the two values that work for this particular 11 pi over 12. So I plug that into my tangent sum identity. I figure out what each of these are individually. So there are my individual answers. In this one, we got nice and lucky. It's repeated here and here. So those are the same answers. I don't have to solve four. I only have to solve two. I plug those in. I finish my math. That one on bottom disappears and I'm left with this. I could end there. However, because we don't like um, radicals or roots in the denominator, I really should conjugate to remove that. Remember, a conjugation is the exact same thing, but change the sign. So I'm conjugating just the bottom, but I'm not allowed to multiply in just the bottom, so I multiply it by, I put itself up top so that this whole thing is a form of one. So now I FOIL, you know, uh, first times first, first times that, this times this, this time that, this times this, this time. So however you see that distribute box method, whatever works for you. Now I can get rid of some stuff. I can combine things together. Just talk about that. Hold on. Let me talk about that for just a second. I'm not crossing from top to bottom. I'm saying negative square root of three and positive square root of three cancel each other out right there. Up here, they don't because that would be like saying negative X and negative X, which becomes negative two X. My one and three can combine and my one and negative three can combine. And that's how I ended up with this. That would be it. I could split it up, butterfly it. 
get rid of a little bit more, and ta-da. So either of these would have been an acceptable answer, but on a multiple choice, if you get to this point and my answer is this, you can see what I did. I just butterflied it, simplified this side, simplified this side. That's all I did. All right. Now it's your turn. <clears throat> 